Okay. Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of the Jolly Heretic. Now, it's a rather experimental edition of the Jolly Heretic. You're you're in on an experiment, you know, like those chaps in um in in California, University of California, or wherever it was, they locked them in a cellar and they had to become like a prison, and it got very out of hand, like that, but without the violence and the sodomy. Um, and uh, and that is that we're, tr we're we're trying to stream on on two channels. Um, and so we're streaming on my channel, uh, The Jolly Heretic. So hello, welcome to The Jolly Heretic uh, and all that. Um, and also we're streaming on uh, my friend Charlie's channel. So hello, hello. So let me just uh, start off again. So hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to The Jolly Heretic. We're, of course, online public house, which streams on Mondays at 7 p.m. UK time. 2 p.m. New York, which discuss based science and research and stuff of the news, which is increasingly expanded from the news and from our woke joke. <laughs> Universities, and so um, yeah, we've got so in the yeah, this is good. This is working, right? I'm seeing I'm seeing comments on my on here that are on your channel. So this is actually working. Oh, hello, Veechlings. Hello, Veechlings. So, 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 cheers, 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 everybody. Cheers, Charlie. Have a sound. Is there no sound? Is there a problem with the sound? No, I think people can hear me. Can't they? Hello, Monkeypox Survivor, who's saying boo. Um, and Adam eighty seven, who's saying this guy again. Yes, a honorable horse. And so yes, uh, cheers and uh, welcome to the jolly head was Slanja, uh, Salu Prost, Proust. What was that? Um, hello, hello, uh, hello, shalom, shalom. I'm having my um, IDF supporting Coca-Cola as boycotted by your favorite Hamas cosplayers. There's this, there's this, there's this funny noise that I'm hearing. It's it's quite irritating. Um, so um, that again. That's what what is that? That's not me. That's, uh, that's some battery up. running out. Turn, turn your mic up. Oh dear, there's a, there's a, there's a problem with the sound. There we go. Uh, hey, hey, we'll hey. get these teething problems out of the way. We'll we'll sort it out. Is it me? Am I loud? I'm hearing a boop, 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 and I, don't, I think it's you. Whose mic um, up? Whose mic? Whose mic has to be turned up? Somebody. We 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, oh, 1. No, Can no, you hear saying, me? USB is penetrating your port. USB unplug. USB for... Oh, fucking hell. Right, look, I'm going to have to... In, 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 in. It's, it's me. Right, in. Oh, is it Everybody you? In. I think it's me. Right. No sound. No sound from whom? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? We'll get there. Anyway, uh, as, as they get right. it sorted out, I've been um, going. I'm trying to work out what's going on. You, you Charlie can hear me. Uh, sound is fine. Okay, so sound, sound is fine. So it's some, it was some kind of problem or something. Good. So um, good now. Now we're okay. So, so cheers, everybody, and welcome to the Slanja Slanja Bar. Uh, salu, uh, saludo. So there's some kind of problem with my microphone and a USB port making a noise, but it seems to have been s solved now. Yes. Good. Good. Good, good. And now I, my, I don't like my sounds much, but never mind. Um, all right, good. So everybody, so welcome to the Jolly Heretic. And if you're new, uh, hello. There's something about noise now. Um, you, ne you never know when you do these experiments, you see, chaps, you never know what's going to happen. I mean, the, the worst example was when was when I had Professor Nigel Big R on and there was constant problems with the sound. Uh, and, and eventually yeah. I, I, had, I had to just shut everything down and, and just say, no, we can't, we can't, we can't, we can't go on like this. No, ignore them, sound is fine. Yeah, I know, but there was genuinely a problem when, 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 when there was a problem with the sound. It was, it was so bad. And now they're moaning about the fucking sound again, the cunt that said potato. I'm going to start banning people. Anyway, so I, I've had to unplug my microphone, chaps, because you were moaning about the sound. So I'm going to plug it back in with the better microphone, but then, then there's, the, there's the problem of the sound, people moaning about it. Right. Can you hear me? Yes? Good. Right, I'm going to carry on. Good. So cheers, everybody, and um, welcome to the Jolly Heron. Right, now, sound is sound. It is indeed. So um, you're saying um, I was going to talk about the cowards, and I suppose one thing that's uh, rather cowardly is the the, uh, the, 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 the the authorities failing to do anything about the grooming and, um, and interference with young girls. And I, I hadn't read about this. So what is it you've read that's, that's, that's happened now? Yeah, well, I did a video in Rochdale. It's a, it's a kind of, it's a cauldron of um, competing ideologies and religions, and uh, you know, it's serious. When George Galloway, everyone's favourite Scottish politician, is now lo looking to run for an MP, uh, independent in Rochdale. Rochdale is full of muzzies, and so wherever there's a, a happy muzzy, uh, we, our, our GG Galloway friend is there. But I did a video there, got chased away because um, the um, Labour candidate for the Member of Parliament, he said that the Jews genocided their own civilians on October 7th. 
So I went to cover it. And then someone goes, Charlie, you need to go back to Rochdale. I said, why? So I, I type in Rochdale to the news and four children, ages 12, 12, 13, and 14, arrested for a gang rape of a 13-year-old girl. And these things shouldn't be normal. I shouldn't read this and go, oh, well, another day in Greater Manchester. This should be shocking. This, this should be bad news. I mean, my son is 12. He turned 12 a couple of weeks ago. And if I discovered that my son had been involved in a gang rape, I'd be, I'd be very angry with him. I would be very... He, he would lose his PlayStation privileges for 10 days for that. He would lose his PlayStation, his computer. Uh, I mean, it would be... You know, I'd be I'd be seriously... No, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm all joking aside. I, I mean, that's... I, I find it amazing that 12-year-olds would be capable or would even know about such things. I know. I, I was a late bloomer myself. I think that the more based you are, the later you go through puberty as a low light, as a low speed life strategist. And so um, I remember how, how horrible it was in the changing rooms at the Edinburgh Academy, me as a chubby, almost 14 year old, like bald, like a Cupid and seeing all the other guys with like big hairy ball sacks and deep voices and stubble. And no wonder I didn't get any girls when I was young, chubby little um, angelic Charlie. No, but you weren't you weren't you weren't interested in such things because you didn't have a libido yet because you were twelve. And um, I was you... innocent, voice of an angel. I was in the choir, you know, and singing beautiful songs about God and Jesus and stuff. Not not chasing girls, no. Uh, no, no. I mean that's absolutely extraordinary. So twelve year olds and thirteen year olds, and so this is people. These these are children. Children. I mean, yeah. in the case of yeah. not even literal children. Yeah. And uh, do we happen to know the um? You know, of of these uh, of these do we, do we know them well fun, funny you should ask um a bit of um some internet sleuths have tried to find out because obviously they're not going to release the names of the children because they're children and even though they're getting a bit rapey up in Rochdale turns out the rape took place in a white uh underclass uh, council estate so the the rapists were probably young Johnnies and Connors and Liams oh that is i mean that is that is horrific though i mean that's 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 yeah. absolutely and I, I can't. I, I what, what we what we have come to. I, that, that I was I was reading recently though that a lot of um, they have now among Generation Z or younger something called rest. Like it's called menu anxiety, and it's that they're they're so used to helicopter parents that do everything for them, uh, and yeah. teachers you don't ever you don't ever actually solve your own problems. You just go and tell the teacher, you know. Um, as, yeah. As, as, and it occurs in life now. You know, someone says something mean, so, so you ring the police. Uh, or, yeah. Or and so I, I was under the impression that the, that they were moving away from that they were they were losing their virginity later, they're sexually active later, they they're drinking less, they're, they're shutting down nightclubs because no one's using the bloody things, and and yet and yet you yeah. have a subcast of them. It's like they're coming apart, a subcast, and they're exactly the opposite. That um, yeah, no. Doing all I always um. I like to think that uh, us Gen Xers, we are the last year uh, that was considered Generation X, you and I, Ed, 1980. Yeah. And so I like to think that millennials younger than us, because they grew up as, say, 10-year-olds watching um, Iraqi Al-Qaeda beheading videos, you know, that Nick Berg guy, I think he was the first one. So we were already 20 when we saw our first beheading video. But the reason why millennials became so lefty, so communist, wanting to control everything is that they were traumatized by the freedoms of the Internet as children. And so they've gone full lefty. But Zoomers, because now we, we understand the Internet a bit more, Generation Z, I find that, as you say, they're a bit more conservative, having sex later, rebelling against their blue haired uh, tranny pushing parents. Uh, so they're, they're quite into conservative well, values. No, it's the case with your kids, but I've been reading that with a lot of places now, they don't even have playtime. They playtime has had to go because it might precipitate bullying. And so instead of playtime, you have, you know, places where you read poetry or do music. Yeah. So there's no unstructured play. And so yeah. they're, they're, they're used to being told what to do. And so when you put them in a situation where they don't know what to do, like I know, a menu in a restaurant, it's I'm reading yeah. this up, so a third of them are so scared to order that they ask yeah. someone to order for them. Really? Yeah. Is it that social anxiety of speaking to the waiter and just, yeah. it's like, yeah. what is it called? Um, Too much option paralysis. Is that what it is? When you've got too many options, you're paralyzed. It's they like a rabbit they in the said, headlight. They said, they said that they would rather, that a third of them said that they would not go to the restaurant unless they could see the menu online first and make a decision. Yeah. They didn't like the pressure. 
of having to make a decision. It's funny, like, like, yeah, it's um, it's quite disturbing because uh, I remember being 15 years old, 14 year old. I loved going to restaurants, feeling like a grown up, choosing mm -hmm. things, having your first pint at the age of 15, thinking, wow, I'm a grown up. But um, I'm just trying Very to good think, like, yeah, I think, um, you know, maybe previous generations, we all had to interact. But our social media was literally being social with other people. And so we're used to having to get information out of people for our own benefit. But the Zoomers don't have to do that. They don't have to speak to anyone. No, and to tell the teacher, though, at school, to tell the teacher, that was like social death. Uh, you, you don't <laughs> do that. But I, I get the impression that that's more socially acceptable these days. Like that, well, yeah, we've had so many. We've had decades now of anti-bullying. Um, make sure your, your, your fellow student isn't, uh, what's the word? groomed by online extremists or school extremists and so this kind of culture of snitching this night soviet commissar of you know my neighbor uh, i saw him listening to bbc world service you better send the goons round that that's very alive now but what you were saying how playtime has ended ed maybe because what we don't want is for young people to ever have a single free racist thought a free sexist thought a free anti-transgender thought so maybe Outside of lessons, we should put like virtual reality sets of um, woke messages as well as maybe white static noise on headsets for the children so that they, because if they can't see or feel or have any sensual engagement with another pupil, it means that they can't possibly discriminate against another pupil. I think in high diversity areas, the kind it's of white noise headset. Sort of pods, just sort of, just sort of pods, like, uh, or, or like those Victorian prisons where they basically had them stand in upright coffins during during church in the prison, in chapels, so that they couldn't communicate with or even look at uh, another. Yeah. another and, and, their, and their only communication should be with a woman of about 25 with, with blue hair and tattoos who, um, who, yeah. tell, who, who tells them the ways of the world. Uh, and and mm -hmm. that, would be, that, would, that would sort it out. But, that's, but in terms of cowardice, it seems to me, what, what, uh, what bravery is about is hugely, it's about taking risks. I mean, that's the essence of bravery, yeah. isn't it? To take a risk, yeah. which which could yeah. damage you, hurt you, in the interests of other people. And um, yeah. they, they are being taught. I mean, even things like competitive sport teaches you to... I mean, I was, I was the school spaz, right? I was terrible, obviously, at sport. I was last in all, all, all bases, always. Um, but but uh, at least it means you have to come up with coping mechanisms as to how to, how to deal with that. And they don't now. They do things like... If I was at school now, I'd have probably been given a massive head start. That would be the system now. Or or just not have to do it and be declared the winner. I'm not exaggerating. Yeah. This is, this was is, it, this um, is nowadays, was it Kurt Vonnegut in Slaughterhouse-Five? He wrote about the handicapper general that would go around and break the legs of um, ballerinas and children. It was like an anti-communism 1960s American novel. And uh, just, yeah, nowadays... And uh, what they would have done, if you were in a class and you would say you're bad at sports, they would have just come around and maybe sledgehammered the ankles of the other children because they had an unfair privilege over you, uh, you know, as uh, as um, sporty. And so, you know, instead of trying to improve you, you're, you're the victim. Ed, you're the one that's struggling. Anyway, I wanted to ask you something completely unrelated to what we're talking about. How come y your background is so perfectly black? Yes, there you I, go. I, there you I go. have a I, I have a black screen, so in order to look extremely professional, I, I don't want to sort of break the break the break the fourth oh for, break the fourth wall um, and, yeah. and, and tell you too much about it. So I'm not muted now, am I? I've clearly turned it up. They're, they're now they're still yeah. saying I'm muted. It's nine seventeen, so but I surely just turned it on, so I shouldn't. Be muted. Be it takes a there. few seconds for the comments oh, to come I see, through. Jim yeah. Orleans saying I'm muted is he's lying. He's just lying, and Seaman is also lying. Um, and no sound again. It's, they, I, I take it they are lying. Um, yeah. Um, yeah sound, but there's still 917 so um uh, uh, there's loads of the same time say it sound is good you see right so yeah so you just you just have this black it's quite good so that you could just sort of look all right, just like right. Right. oh my. wow look at that reality yeah and then you just you just do this and then and then it's like a professional studio yeah 
and and, yeah. uh, and and like it's like something like, like, like that Louise Perry would do. So, yeah. so, so, so suddenly, you're, suddenly you're sitting in the dark, and it's all it's all perfect. Yeah, that's what you can get. You, you can get one of these, and you just, just get there like that, and um, and then you just put in the if, when you're not filming, you just put it down, stick it under the sofa. Uh, you know, we got especially for you, Ed. We got a, a lady se sensually sucking a disco ball lollipop for the background. I got that ready for today's uh, oh, live I see. stream. Oh, yeah, that's very good. Oh, that's very good. I hadn't seen that. Yeah, yeah, I see. I there see there you go. Right. She's uh, she's sucking a disco ball lollipop from a, an era when uh, men were allowed to find ladies attractive, and from when ladies were allowed to do things like be attractive without upsetting the the big fat ugly ones. But coming back to the issue with um cowardice and why it's yeah. rising um mm. surely you know we we killed god we've killed heaven or hell we've killed eternal punishments we've killed the mystery but alongside killing all these potentially oppressive things and the liberation of atheism we've killed infinity and we've killed living forever and so i cannot be like a jihadi and go into battle and put my life at risk because I'm not 100% sure in the afterlife, but if I were 100% sure, if I was a Christian from the age of zero and, you know, raised like that, I reckon I'd be a lot braver. I, I, I'm brave enough, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't put my life at risk, for example, in Ukraine right now, I, you know, that sort of thing. That's a good point. But I suppose an alternative argument is that um, woke people, left-wing people, they are, they are certain there's no God and life has no meaning. And so they, um, they're very angry. And and all they have is this life, and and they want to make sure it's fair, and and they get their, you know, they're very Machiavellian, and 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 they 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 want power, and they want to be in charge or whatever, because all there is is this life, and so they want to make sure that they're in charge. Whereas people that are conservative, you know, they've got more of a contentment, more of a feeling that that well, yeah, there's the next life, so I just want to just grill. Yeah, so you know, sort of it, it gives me great, like as as a, a somewhat. A somewhat believer in uh, nice, uh, beautiful, higher thoughts. Um, I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'll admit it. I'll, instead of trying to fucking cover it up, I've lost my train of thought, Ed, and I'm embarrassed. But I'll admit it. I've lost it. But we were talking about. I said. I said that people that are conservative are perhaps less active and less like and, and less likely to take risks, even because because they just have a contentment that there's a new, another life and everything's going to be all right. Whereas if you yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I've got it back here. So in the Bible, one of the most beautiful lines, there is no greater love than he who lays down his life for his friend. And now you can interpret that as like going into battle, Spartan, last stand at the, the Alamo. I'm, at the, I'm going to lay down my life and fight off the, the Indians or whoever, the Mexicans. But, but I don't think it's as dramatic as that. There is no greater love for he or she who will sacrifice their corporeal realm Say you have to look after a disabled relative, or or you have to like you know like, oh shit I've I've screwed up, and you have to like look after someone. You might say, well, if I live forever and God loves me, I will happily sacrifice this life to look after this disabled person, or, or whatever. That's a, a trite example, but yes, with I, I'm kind of contradicting the kind of lefties being brave, but they're driven by atavistic hubristic rage, which uh, I think it kind of clouds their. Um, thinking about the afterlife. Sorry, yeah. What was that noise? Was that me? Echoing I, 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 I've realised that I'd forgotten to sign into the old entropy. If you want to send in super chats, uh, then of course, uh, if there's something difficult, I will research them and you'll have a, an answer by next week. If there's something we can do today, we can do today. So if you want to send in super chats, they can be sent in either on entropy, link is pinned, or on YouTube, or if you're watching on Charlie's channel, they can be sent in on YouTube, I don't think he has an entropy. Um, uh, but they can be sent in, and if we can answer them today, we will answer them today. And if we can't answer them today, then if I have to research them, then I will I will research them, and you will have a jolly intelligent ar uh, answer uh, by next week. Um, and and uh, so I just signed into entropy, and normally the, you don't get the feedback loop, uh, and I just got a feedback loop. That's what happened. Fair enough. Okay, I'll, I'll forgive it this one time, Adam. This one time. I, 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 I'm just fine. Mr. How, how many? How many? How many hundreds have we got watching us? Yeah, I have twelve hundred watching me, and I yes. don't know how many are watching you. I can't. Tell right, Veechlings, there better, better be at least twelve hundred in there as well. Better be two and a half thousand. Well, that's that's, be that's, that's fine to, to sort of you know 
So you can check. Think, of a, think of a Roman amphitheater with two and a half thousand young and Roman hello, citizens people, watching. Odyssey, hello, people on Odyssey, how are you doing? I don't know how many that is, but hello, hello, people on the other Odyssey. It's uh, it's good to see you. Uh, there's 562 watching on your channel, Charlie, and 1,991 watching on mine. So hello, 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 nice. everybody. How, how, how are you doing? Okay, so um, hmm. yeah. So I'm upset. Been, Ed. There, there's only 500. You know what? It's because you're known as a, a man who talks, and so people want to listen to you talk. But I'm not the talking man, so if it's not smashing a crackhead in the face, they're not going to watch. No, Bastards. I think I think it's, I think it's more likely that it's the first time you've done it. You've had no notice. Oh, yes. Whereas the, yes. the, 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 the drinkers at the Jolly Heretic have known for about three years that that on the, Monday Monday night is drinky night. Um, yeah. And and and, uh, and 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 so and so and so uh, you know that's uh, that's that's the that's the that's the that's the, that's, that's the way it is. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, and just 168 likes on his channel, Charlie. Oh, that's outrageous. We, we, we need we need we need we need more we need more likes, chaps. We need 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 need, 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 need more need more need more likes. I think. So I was saying, I'm yeah. lying. I'm not well, like unless this, this what I'm seeing on the screen isn't 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 adding together of both our viewerships, which could be the case. I I I, I thought I'm just seeing mine. Um, but um, anyway, uh, yes, yeah, I think so. I think you're right that there, there could be an element that that, that and also a big element of it is laying down your life for your friend. We see that as brave, laying it down for your friends, and even more so for a stranger, for the for the the Samaritan that crosses yeah. the road. And that's what happened today or yesterday in the UK, which was this driving instructor. I would argue not a very good driving instructor because he drove into a very deep ford. He he, he drove into a flooded ford, and was it Rufford Ford? It was a ford in Essex, and he he um. I would have thought it was obvious that if it's flooded, then you probably don't want to drive into a basically a river. And um and yes, I've um I've become quite autistic. Sorry to jump in, but you got me excited. This is one of my special interests at the moment. There's a YouTube channel called Rufford Ford and it's uh, it's that? probably the one you've watched and it's literally people just videoing chancers thinking they can cross this pretty deep ford in their ford fiestas and um the mistake they make it the, the, the front bumper is hitting the water and it's all but then they go a bit fast and then you see the water all goes into the grill and into the bloody carburetor and then they're fucked so for anyone watching to go through a ford Drive at a snail's pace, and then you don't force the water up into your bloody engine. Yeah, and and you don't you don't you don't engage in aquaplaning. I'm 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 told oh. aquaplaning is a serious. I was once driving on the motorway here in Finland, and I was with uh, my daughter and son and uh, their 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 two cousins, these two girls, and I thought how uh, there was water on the road, and I thought, well, look, I've got a choice. If I drive through that fast, then it's going to be splashy, splashy. And that's going to be fun, but I am going at 120 kilometers an hour. So there are arguments in favour of slowing down because I don't want to lose control of the car, particularly not with four children in the car. Yeah. And well, I did, I did slow down. Knowing what I know of you, Ed, um, you you know to just keep the the steering wheel straight, even if you feel the rear end or the front end start to slide, just don't try and fix it because it's the people that try and fix it that end up. Flipping over and dying. Uh, well, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't. I've never actually been in that situation. I've never. I've never been. Monkeypox survivor has declared he is unsubscribing from my channel. Oh well, you can't. You can't please them all. Really. Um. But, but he often. Well, but that's because he he is he is he is a homosexual who got monkeypox from having homosexual. He got bad AIDS from having. <laughs> No, no one, no one, no, no one talks about bad AIDS anymore. I don't because I, because the thing is that now it's uh, you you can live for ages with with the AIDS. You can you it doesn't matter anymore. Oh it's, yeah, it's, it's not the uh, yeah like killer. even like being a bug chaser. You know, there's like people in the gay community that will go out and actively try and infect others or to catch the what they call the bug. But with all the retrovirals and the immune uh, drugs, you can get. You can suppress the, the bad AIDS, the good. Whether you get it from a transfusion or whether you get it from a, an infected penis in your butthole, they can suppress it fine. So you can just go on and on and on, just live and live and live. So what's the. Yeah, what's the, what's like, the... you know. Do you remember when we were like 12 years old, Ed? And uh, they told us that one in three people in sub Saharan Africa had AIDS. And I thought, mm. wow, by the time I'm 40, sub Saharan Africa will have no one left in it. It's all bullshit. They've all got AIDS and they're fine. 
Oh man, yeah, I remember. I remember oh, that's yeah, that's so. There's no incentive anymore. So what's the what's the thing now then that you just you just shouldn't get? I mean, there must be um, something now. Uh, I think herpes still upsets people quite a lot because you get like herpes. visual representation. You know, it's like the gay men when they were getting monkeypox uh, from each other's buttholes and they were getting sores here and, and on the and on the backside. Like um, herpes seems to upset people. Um, um, it's not an STD, but thrush rears its ugly head from, from time to time with people, and uh, that can give you a, an itchy uh, groin region. A thrush, which is just like a uh, yeast. It's like a, a baker has maybe flicked some yeast into your ball sack and goes on your bell end. And you get a yeast infection. Um, let me think what else. Um, I think things like chlamydia or syphilis have kind of taken I, a yeah, back yeah, burner yeah, now. Yeah, chlamydia, I remember watching it. It was Manchester, actually. It was a, it was a sex, it was a, uh, an STD clinic in Manchester. And there was this woman, she was 35 or something, and she'd had syphilis. And yeah. syphilis. She'd had uh, chlamydia for ages without knowing that she had it. And the result yeah. was that she was fertile. That, 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 was, that was it. That was, she was, that's what happens if you have, it can happen if you have uh, it can, Yeah, if it gets up into your ovaries and then the, it's, a, it's also a fungus, uh, chlamydia. So yeah, if it, if it, if it's like kind of gone off bread or like a, like a rotten, um, a bad apple, you know, and it spoil the whole bunch. If once that fungus gets into your ovaries, I bet those, uh, those eggs are fucked. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. I didn't know. I didn't know about that. I have to say, I didn't know about that. But but yeah. So that's that's a serious problem. You got and the, the STD levels are increasing. I mean, that's the, 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 the and certain kinds of gonorrhea have become resistant to antibiotics, and so we are we are yeah. preparing ourselves for un unsolvable STD crisis traps. And I remember doing a video yeah. about two years ago saying this was going to happen, and it now is happening. And the, the the spike in things like syphilis and, uh, and gonorrhea and all this stuff is is quite incredible. People are having all people are people are are diseased increasingly, and it's gonna. Um, I mean, the thing I was watching about this Manchester clinic, there was this guy who he was a, a, a gay porn star or something, and and and, and he, he had all these diseases, and they had to, they had to make sure he was clean before going on a shoot. And this was this was a problem because because uh, the shoot was happening soon, and there's all this money behind it and all this, but he couldn't. He couldn't. Uh, he had to have a thing from a doctor saying that he doesn't have, I don't know, any any particular uh, STD uh, in order in order to go on the shoot. Um, the, the level of degeneracy is really quite serious, um, and it's uh, the the level of promiscuity is very high. Uh, like, again, there's yeah. this, there's this division in society, this divide between those that are yeah. generations and the, the opposite, and then those that are the complete. There's a hollowing out of the middle, and it seems that you're either yes, you're it's either, uh, the the Overton window of what's acceptable versus what's like too kinky and degenerate has shifted to the point like the transgenders and their ideology has like when we were kids Ed like being gay or homosexual was still quite a big thing it's like you come out of the closet I remember when I was 18 at university one of my best friends came out as gay and it was a massive deal we threw a party as like, oh my god did you know Kieran's gay sorry Kieran if you're watching I didn't mean to out you but, you know, but what I'm trying to say is being gay nowadays is like being straight 30 years ago. Like the trannies have made it so degenerate that now like normal gays, who like, you know, like there's like conservative gays like Douglas Murray. He's like, he's a gay I can get behind. He's a good gay. The, the, mm -hmm. the trannies have changed it so much that the stigma of even being gay. I mean, like if I wasn't in a, in a relationship with a beautiful young English girl, I'd probably be gay at the weekend just to see what it's like, you know. It, 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 uh, Ten billion guys can't be wrong, you know. It, there's no stigma anymore. They, is there no stigma? No, I suppose there's not. No, well, there's... Is there... Not with gay. Gay lesbian is like the new straight. Like, the trannies with, like, trying to chop the balls off toddlers, that's so extreme that, like, gay people are like, whoa, get that fucking tranny shit off our flag. We want the conservative, traditional gay rainbow flag. We are yeah, the strong not, conservative not, gays. Sort of, sort of Martin Luther, uh, uh, not Luther King, you know, judge people by the content of their character, kind of equality, kind of gay. That's what that's what's that's what's desired, rather rather than this yeah. new, this new this new idea that uh, yeah, I've, 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 they've they've taken it they've taken it too far. And I wonder, what do you think about the? I was watching a video by our friend academic agent, and he wonders if we've reached peak woke and we're seeing a their understanding they've gone too far. It's created too much yeah. chaos too much division you have a massive segment of british society which is anti-israel and pro-palestine and whatever 
uh, brought about by yeah. Wokeism, effectively. Uh, um, um, and, and there's a movement back to try and contain this. What do you think about that idea? I, I couldn't agree more. Like, um, you know, like peak woke, like peak oil. We've not reached peak oil yet. They're still using the crude. But peak woke for me, Ed, happened about 18 months ago when the Daily Telegraph did an incredible investigative journalism study into Mermaids, the Transgender for Children charity, and exposed that. And they pretended to be 10-year-old girls, 12-year-old girls, young gay guys. And mermaids, they had their big, fat, green-haired, like, chubby they-thems on the phone, recorded as a fake Daily Mail, per Daily Telegraph. They were sending out chest binders to 12-year-old girls, saying, oh, you can be a boy. And they were advising them, and the Daily Telegraph got it all. Don't tell your parents yet. Like, don't tell that your, your parents are bigots. They'll just try and change your mind. They'll try and repress your inner woman or your inner man. And so the general public, the normies, they read this and said, fuck that shit. I'm sorry. We've given the LG TV 4K plus crowd enough, but now we've given them enough rope. They've hung themselves, literally. No, no, no joke on the 41% that actually do. Highest suicide rate of any psychological condition in the world, but it's good for your kids. So good, the good news is now, together with the gays and the lesbians being so based now that we see transgenderism for what it is, as in it's, um, what did Jordan Peterson say the other day? Um, oh, yeah. The UN, the UN charity, they were like saying female genital mutilation is still a massive problem in uh, Africa, blah, blah, blah. And Jordan Peterson says, you fucking pieces of shit. You suckers of Satan's cock. What about genital mutilation for all the people that you convince are the opposite gender? You and he got really angry. Yeah, yeah, at he, got, he, got, he, got, he got cross, did he? He got, he got upset. Uh, but yeah, it's he, uh, yes. Sorry, no, no. Yes, he did. He did. Yeah, yeah he got, he got, he got, he got rather upset. But it, it's, but then I, I wonder if, so, if something could develop to make transsexuals seem sort of perfectly normal and reasonable. Because once you go, um, yes, I reckon yeah. if, if the, you know how obviously the COVID vaccines were all gene-based mRNA things that changes some of the instructions to produce the spike protein. If there was a vaccine that could alter your chromosomes, and so a man could literally chromosomally turn into a woman and be a woman, then I think that would be almost based because genetically then it would be a woman. But until then, we're going to have this weird freaky clown show of like, it is no, like I, a freaky I mean, clown I mean, show. I meant mean more that now we, we look back with nostalgia to the 90s when it was great, that when yeah. it, it was unusual to be gay and whatever. And, and now will there come a time where we'll look back with nostalgia to the 2020s or 2010s because there'll be people, there are people yeah. that are literally aroused like, by the idea of being a dog. Um, or or yeah. there, there are much more extraordinary um, mm -hmm. expressions of, of dysphoria, of sexual dysphoria. Mm -hmm. of uh, I mean, maybe. I mean, I've met transgenders that i enjoy the company of uh, many of them have done intros for my channel and many of them have taken me aside and uh, said charlie thank you for saying i am a transgender person i hate the ideology I, I hate the idea of pushing it onto children and so i have met conservatives i mean uh, we've mentioned this before on your show about a year ago there's a 1980s movie called the crying game when, which i watched when i was eight years old and there was a young black gay transgender who halfway through the movie gets his floppy cock out and people used to accept, you know, that these people existed. I think it's only when it became an ideology that we had to, the way they, they present it, we need to rescue the children from being in the wrong gender. And then they'll kill themselves if we don't reach these transgender children in time. And it, it's just, it doesn't get anything that goes after the children, whether it's communism or any ideology that has to get children young. This is why, you know, um, I, I would say um, Islam, and Judaism, you know, everyone knows I've got lots of Jewish friends, but I've got two, two big issues with them. One, they don't wave back at me when I let them out of a junction. You know, the, the wave that you give it. Thanks, mate. They don't wave back, the motherfuckers. And the second point is, oh. the Orthodox yeah. Jewish community in Manchester, they need to wave. Like when you let them out at a junction, they don't give you the, you know, the wave, what I mean, you know, the kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And the second thing, I've got a big bone to pick with the Jews. Is you gotta leave the little baby boy penises alone. Like I'm sorry. Like I know how it came about four thousand years ago. Like let me just go on a massive rant here. I reckon Homo sapiens started in the Horn of Africa. You can tell by looking at them. 
the Somali, Eritrean, Ethiopian types. There's something different there. And then they went into West Africa, gave a, you know, Bantus, that sort of thing. But surely when the Homo sapiens went north into the Levant, they met the Neanderthals, which were autistic, big hominids. They merged and formed the first metacognitive people. And by metacognitive, sorry to use wank terms, the ability to think about thinking, to be, you know, it's like a higher order thought, thinking that you're conscious that you're conscious that you're conscious. And so hmm. the Jews had that, but then they must have got lots of infected penises because it's in the desert, it's a bit smelly. But but nowadays there's no, basically, this is my big rant, yeah. yeah. Wave up the drivers, stop chopping the foreskins off, and then me and the Jews, I'll, I'll, I'll convert me, to Judaism. Let's, 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 let's think about this. Right, so first of all, um, Somalis and Eritreans are highly Arabized, particularly Somalis. So um, they're, they're, they're neurotic people uh, with significant a Arab uh, and thus white uh, admixture. So I don't think... Caucasian, yeah. Yeah, so they're not where humanity started. Um, human humanity likely started much further south uh, uh, and is perhaps the Bushmen are, are more like what the... Yeah, the, the Khoisan tribe. Some of them look almost... Chinese. None of these groups. Yeah. Now, some of some of are these we allowed groups, to do that on your channel? Are we allowed to do, do that? that? Don't do anything dodgy on the channel. Maybe it's on your channel as well. Um, some 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 of these some of these oh, groups do um do um uh, do do practice circumcision. So, for example, the Maasai Mara uh, of Kenya, they they practice circumcision. Um, but then some of them don't. So, um, I think yeah. uh, it's I, I think it's much more likely to be a social thing. That they that, that it's a way of in, in the same way that they will tattoo themselves or whatever. It's a way of marking you very clearly as part of that group. There's no way you yeah. can defect. So what I, I yeah. wouldn't be surprised if the groups that practice it are are on are bordered by groups that don't. And that was it's, that's exactly true in the Bible. Like none of the group the groups that the, the Jews practice circumcision or the Israelites practice circumcision. Um, and my understanding is that none of the surrounding groups do. So it's it's it ensures uh, you can't defect. you can't defect. I understand. And in fact, in fact, interestingly, we're well, not interested. It's a horrible thing, but during the um, the partition of India, um, the uh, there was this you know, this mass there's this hatred between um, Hindus and, and and Muslims. And so one of the things that the, the Hindus would do if they thought somebody was a Muslim is they'd just pull the trousers down and check what their penis was like. And if, of course, if, if it was circumcised, they were a Muslim. And if it wasn't, they were a Hindu or a Sikh. Um, and so mm. I think that's, I think it's much more likely to be a, a, a social thing, like quite, quite where it, yeah. like which was the first group that did it. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but it's a, it seems to be a social, no. much more a social. But how come, yeah. how come it's our Ju Judaic cousins who are best known for the circumcision? Why are they like, I know American Christians used to do it in the 80s, 90s, but why is it Jews that we associate with a snippy snip? Um, I would well, there's two there's two large groups that do it. There's the Jews and the Muslims. And, yeah. and I, I'm, assume, I'm assuming that the Muslims have inherited the idea from from the Jews by, by whom they are. It's Judaism 2.0, in a way. The something skull like, cap, like, and the halal. The... They love a they something, love a something, something copying. Like that. So, yeah, so so something like that. Yeah. Um, and and uh, and I, I guess that they're well, they're just known for it because it's because we non we Gentiles don't do it, and they were the only yeah. group for a long time in large style contact with, and so they they do. Yeah, it's an interesting point you make about the Americans. My understanding is that among Americans of our age, um, that they, they uh, it's about eighty percent that were cir circumcised. And now, yeah. and now it's changed. Now it's now it's decreasing and decreasing. And it was believed yeah. that it was somehow cleaner or something. Um, well, that's that's the myth. I, I I think a part of it is you know human beings like any other mammals, big fans of rutting and sex. I think it has an, a a positive effect of dulling the nerve endings in your glands, your your bell end, and so you think about sex less often. So you're able to then think about abstract things like accounting and making money and academia and community stuff maybe well but then why would the, my understanding with the maasai 
is that when they when they do it with the Maasai, it's done in public. It's the rite of passage into adulthood. It's done with a spear. And if the Maasai boy um, um, exhibits the slightest fear or pain, then he is like shunned and he is shunned by his yeah. family. His family will even kill him because of the because of the shame yeah. that he has he has yeah. shown weakness. Funny you, you mentioned it. I read um, when I was when I was still really into reading books in my teens and twenties. I read uh, a long walk to freedom. Can you you know the author? A long walk to freedom. Um, is this Terry Wace or someone like that? No, no. He uh, he was the leader of South Africa from ninety four. Oh, I see uh, him. Oh, yes, 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 yes. All right, yes. So yes. Nelson Mandela. He has a chapter in his Long Walk to Freedom book about how much he enjoyed getting circumcised and how he didn't cry or show any fear. And he's a South African, obviously. I didn't know that. That's very interesting. I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that the, he's a South African prince, isn't he? King or something. He was a, a, a so so. Oh, he's very well bred. Yeah, in South Africa. yeah. So the causer, the causer. Yeah. He's oh. causer. Yeah. He's he's some and, um, causer come, coming back. Yeah, Kosa, yeah. And you, you see, I think you might be onto something. Like, I just did a big chat with uh, Google Gemini, which is the most advanced language model AI at the moment. And I, I try and get it to say base things, and we talk about things. And I get told off for being politically incorrect. But it did kind of say that the latest genetic analysis says that the first Homo sapiens were around the Horn of Africa. But who knows? Maybe you're right. Maybe it was South Africa, and they've been well, away. Oh, Kenya. I mean, read, well, yeah, you're right. I, my understanding is that is that uh, uh, the original view is that it was around the Horn of Africa, somewhere like that, like Kenya. Yeah, like somewhere yeah. around there. Um, and then yeah. um, more, more, more recently, that that they're they're taking the view that it was further south. Um, yeah. Of course, there are some people that dispute this completely. There was a Chinese academic that I had on this channel who argues that the first humans emerged in China. Um, and um, and he yeah. just like Chinese. I mean, like he 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 puts he puts forward his case. Uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he reckons he reckons China and not 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 Africa at all. And then there are some people, of course, that argue that it was a number of different emergences, like almost like not like separate species, but that separate emergences that then interbred with each other. So that there's three um, like convergent. Like yeah, a convergent like a evolution where different species all turning into crabs in different parts of the world. And they're not actually crabs, but they look identical to crabs. It's coming together. Something, something like that. Yes, convergent evolution. And so and so then they, they emerged in a number of different places. And then um and then and then mm -hmm. uh, but then again again, some people argue that's that's not the case. So there's there, yeah. there remains debate over over our precise uh, human origins. But there remains I no wanted to ask you. Yes. I wanted to ask you, Ed, like, you know, you were saying how, like, a circumcised penor, there's no escaping that fact. What was the word you said? Um, there's no, um, I, I used a nice word, but isn't, like, halal or kosher food a way to stop your adherence from eating with the enemy and getting funny ideas that might go against Islam or Judaism? Yeah, so Is that the purpose yeah, of these? I don't know what the exact, I mean, you could argue that, um, that, that there's, uh, I tell you, I'll answer that after I've done my middle of the show spiel, well, roughly middle of the show. So about halfway through, so hello, 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 well, welcome to the Jolly Heretic. We are an online public house, it's on Mondays at 7pm UK time, 2pm New York, which discuss based ideas that are increasingly expunged from our woke joke universities. And I have with me my friend uh, Charlie Beach, um, and uh, we have been chatting about all kinds of interesting stuff. Um, if you would like to, uh, please do help my channel, then please, please, please do subscribe. It's vitally important if you do that. Uh, and please subscribe here, and please subscribe on jollyheretic.com, which is my substack, where there's all kinds of interesting stuff, which is far too based on YouTube, in-person interviews and vlogs and all kinds of stuff. Uh, links in description. You can uh, purchase Jolly Heretic merchandise. You can sign up for my course at Gen Uni. You can send in uh, uh, Bitcoin. You can become a reporter on Subscribestar, which means we can chat on Skype. Most importantly, you can buy my books, all of which are available on Amazon. And if you're not familiar with Charlie, because you're on my channel, then likewise, Charlie Beach. Um, and uh, Charlie mainly goes around Manchester uh, documenting the collapse of civilization, basically. So, um, so do uh, do do uh, do uh, uh, subscribe um, over there. Um, um, good. Um, what was I going to say? Um, yes. So, but, and if you have any questions, that's it. Yes. And then, of course, they can be sent in on Entropy uh, or on YouTube, and I will on either channel, and I will research them, and you will receive. If it's a complicated question, I have to actually research an intelligent answer within a week. Uh, say every Monday at seven p.m. And otherwise, we will just answer them today. Uh, what are you going to say, Charlie? Sorry. 
No, it's gonna. You're gonna talk about halal and kosher. Our poem. Yes, I, we also have a resident poet at the Jolly Heretic Public House, and he has written a poem in honor of tonight's uh, stream, which is as follows: uh, Once over nations we towered, now each of us is a coward. We no longer shine and welcome decline. The whole national mood has been soured. Thank you very much. And if you would like, it's very good as, as ever um, uh, from our resident poet, Mr. Quinn. And if you would like to buy his book of poetry, uh, then it is, of course, available uh, on the old uh, Amazon. Um, uh, yes. So uh, what, what the point? Yeah, about the food. That was the point. Um, um, yeah, it's interesting. So there's, there's some there's some research which has uh, argued that um, it, pork, for example, is tabooed because in hot environments it's got like worms in and stuff and it's bad for you. So that's one reason. Um, but another another reason it's tabooed is because you um, it's just a test of membership that oh, you, you don't eat the pork or you don't drink alcohol uh, and therefore you're making a sacrifice and you're showing that you're um, you're a member of, of our group. And of course, in in uh, um, in Judaism, there's very complicated dietary laws. You can't put bloodied meat and shellfish and all this. Um, but it could be argued that, that, that I think there's two functions that they that it's it's an in-group out-group marker, but also it, a lot of it just does seem to be health. Like you're, it's um, it's a bad idea to eat shellfish in the Middle East; they go off very easily. And yeah, then you get ill, so don't eat them. I see. Um, I see. I've seen modern I've seen modern Jewish propaganda saying the reason we don't eat crustaceans is that they're cockroaches and weevils of the sea. I said, well, not quite, but yeah, shellfish does go off in the desert, doesn't it? It's not, not that they're yeah. sea insects. They think, I, I wondered, I always wondered if like lobsters were related to insects. I mean, similar number of legs, but but um, but, but apparently not. No, it's just a convergent. A lobster is like a, a kind of, you know, in Japan, they've got like mech warrior fights, like big robots that battle. A lobster is a mech warrior grasshopper. Yeah, it does look like a grasshopper, but they're not related. Yeah, and they're not. They're not. No. They're not related. In fact, they're not related. But 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 uh, yes, yeah, so I, I think it's it's those. I think like, I just I didn't know this. I was in Spain some weeks ago in Granada, and it, someone told me that the reason why they you noticed that in Spain they eat a lot of pork products. They're they're very they love into the their pork. various kinds of sausage and, and and whatever, and it was suggested that the reason that that developed in part. Was because when they recolonized Spain from the Moors, um, then a lot of Moors and a lot of Jews would con would, be, would yep. become conversos and would say, "Oh, yeah, I'm a Christian, yeah, whatever." And they wanted a, like a test that that person was genuinely not a Jew or not it was genuinely a yeah. Christian. The test was that to make them eat pork. Um, and that's and it. The, the, uh, that was, that's that's so it. It's like a, as they say, "La reconquista con el porco ibérico." Eat that. Jew or Muslim. And, you know, funny you should mention the Iberian Peninsula. I'm looking back. Um, I found out, Ed, that my mother's maiden name from Portugal. I'm not going to say it on here. Some people might know it. You know, I realized in the past that they're like, oh, tell us your, your porn star name. It's your first pet and your mother's maiden name. And I'm like, <laughs> realizing I'm giving all my information to fishers and scammers. You know, those are security questions. First pet, mother's maiden name. Anyway, I found out my mother's maiden name was a Sephardic Jewish tribe forced to convert to Catholicism in the 1500s. How does that make me? Am I a Jew? Matrilineal Jew? Uh, well, no, obviously not, because because it's your mother's maiden name, which comes from her father. That's so, right. That's like when, when ladies say, I, I refuse to take my husband's name. I'm keeping my name. And you say, oh, you mean your father's name? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's your, it's your, it's your mother's, 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 mother's line, like like that. That would have to, as, according to, I mean, those laws were actually introduced quite late. I don't understand it. It was like the eleventh century that they that they they started doing that. But it, it is rather stupid, though, to use your mother's maiden name as a security question because if you know anything about genealogy, which I do, then if yeah. you're British, then I could find out your mother's maiden name in seconds. Yeah. So, so it's it, it's it's and even if you're Scottish, I could do it. I mean, it's more difficult if you're Scottish, but I could still do it. So, so yeah. you know, it's, ne never use your your mother's maiden name. Anybody, as long as you haven't got, as, as long as you've got a reasonably like not that common. So if your surname is Smith, then it becomes more difficult to use these sites yeah. to, 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 find, to find it out. If your yeah. surname is is uh, anything remotely, not even that unusual, you can find it. So I've been, um, I've been, yeah. I, I, you know, 
that jab hand, jab hand at doing that. Now we have a couple of questions, yeah. so, which I, I shall look at. And I've been this is from um, before Pan we go to the questions. Can I ask you something very quickly, Ed? Before we go mm. into the questions, can I ask you something very quickly? Mm. Whilst I've got your brain, um, it, uh, I've also got your full attention. I've been thinking a lot mm. about ideologies and how some of them are quite useful and they're like multi, like effective, like like. Yeah, I think Christianity, whether your life is going well or going badly, you can get some solace. But I'm, I want to raise um, Islamism and also the, you know, Nazi national socialist ideology. I was watching a documentary and uh, the Nazis were doing a lot of good shit for them from their point of view in the East. They were winning. But then there was one big battle they lost against the Russians. And it changed the whole mentality of Germany because they, they were like, we are number one. We're the, the kind of top dogs. And with Islam as well, they were going so well in their golden era until the Mongols decided to sack Baghdad. And then all the kind of like, we are the final revelation of God, we are perfect. The Mongols came and shot them all from the back of horses with arrows. And, and then that kind of, Robert Spencer, the Islam academic, he says that if your religion or ideology is built about you being supreme and number one, the moment you're not number one, your whole civilization will fall apart because it's not correct How, what do you think about that um maybe but on the other hand what tends to happen is that is that religions can be quite fluid so that when christianity started off it was basically the religion of the sort of the, the lower middle class middle class people really who weren't the upper class and so then it yeah. reached peace and virtue signaling and all that stuff um in order in order to alter to, to increasingly gain power and then once it became yeah. the, religion of the upper class, then 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 the dominant discourse within Christianity started to change to being that it's um, that it is a religion of power, and 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 you know God wants us to conquer and and and, and all this sort of thing. And then you find so that we, when, when yeah. well, no, the, but then so when that, you get subgroups within it that then want to gain power again, like the Protestants, similar thing. They purity signal, they virtue signal. They, they, um, in order to attack the hierarchy, and they, and they gain yeah. power. So I think you've got all of these possibilities within Christianity of it being a religion of peace or it being a religion of violence and war, depending on the circumstances. I see. Just one second. I want to just get a prop, Ed. Uh, one second. Prop. Okay. Okay. Johnny, one second. Ahead. You know, um, you were saying last week we were discussing the Tucker Carlson interview with Putin. And you said mm. that Putin said that he should just say, look, we're a based Christian nation and based nations invade other countries. So what, why don't the Russians get their orthodoxy back on and say, for the glory of Christ, we're going to invade these heathens and make them Christian again? Is that the kind of like dominance, like my upper class Christianity? My understanding is that, yeah, that, that is an element of their idea that we, we are going to bring Russianness. So all, all of these places that are under the Russian Federation, like Kalumaika and all of these obscure uh, non-Russian republics. We, we, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna Russianness is good, and we're gonna bring Russianness to these places. And that was our attitude yeah. in the in the in the nineteenth century, wasn't it? Britishness is the best. We're gonna bring Britishness to. It's it's our burden. It's the white man's burden to bring to, in, yeah. in the world of, of Kipling to bring to bring Britishness to the world. So that's what maybe he mm -hmm. should just start arguing that he should maybe he should just say that and say well that's what you used to argue so we're we're going we're going to do that but um, I don't I don't know I mean uh, how good but yeah there's your Orthodox cross there and and there, there's the Jesus Jesus man uh, but I don't I don't know, I don't know how much that's gonna I'm I'm getting quite bored of this Russia thing now to be honest it's been going on for over two years. Uh, almost two years. Yeah, and uh, I get I get anx anxiety watching trench warfare in the twenty first century with suicide drones flying in. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't I don't know why they would want to go there and fight for either any either side as well. You get these people they, that are British that have just decided to go and fight for U Ukraine or whatever. Um, I mean, that's yeah. that's sacrificing. I have to say. Um, well, anyway. I think there's a lot of. They're not getting paid very much. I, I did some research. The uh, Foreign Legion, the Ukrainian Forces Foreign Legion, they get 3,300 euros a month for frontline duties and only 1,000 euros a month for in the rear with the gear duties. Okay, so... so, so the, okay. Mm. 
So they're not doing it for the riches. They're doing it probably for the thrill. You know, you're an office-based worker. It's the same reason why middle-class directors of companies become road cyclists, because they've got no masculinity or power. And they can, at least I can fuck up a driver's journey by driving in parallel with another cyclist in the middle of the road. The same reason why people go I to Ukraine. Do, I, do, I was driving in, no, I've only driven once in England. It was uh, last summer in Northern England. And I, I, it never happened before because in Finland, cyclists cycle on the pavement and pavements are wide. But in, uh, in in England, these bastards, and it's not it's not good enough for them to just be cyclists. That's not good enough. They have to no. wear gear to, to Spandex. show off the fact that they're cyclists. And then I found myself in a village called Great Budworth, which is close to a place called Dutton. Where I went there, and and um, and then there's all these cyclists and they're spandex, and I'm like, I'm just I hate you all. And you can't overtake on these country roads. You can't because they're so winding. No. You can't see if someone's coming the other way. So you, you yeah. have to just stay behind them and and drive slowly. And it's yeah. Boring. There's no need for it. There's no need for it. As they said in Top Gear, you stop playing with children's toys when you grow up. So why are you riding a bicycle? Absolutely. Yeah. Get a car. And, there's and a lot of, yeah, there's Freudian death wish. Like these are middle-aged accountants and directors, 55 years old, riding this stupid $2,000 carbon fiber italian bike they don't even care if they get run over i reckon they want that thrill of almost dying they love it and there's that guy that guy um jeremy vine is that isn't that yeah this newsreader yeah and he, wears, scumbag. He, wears a, he wears a he wears a camera on his helmet in order to film his interactions with drivers whom he deliberately and willfully annoys um yeah and there's and another one who, who takes photographs of people Checking a text message in traffic, which I don't think is that big a crime. At a red light, you can check your text message, and he sends it to the police. Awful! They're terrible. They're terrible people. Cyclists. They really are terrible people. Um. Right. Now I'm going to answer this question, sir, which is from Pofferfryron Timotheus, and he says last week, BBC equality equal only sacred to Christians. If we became pagan, not even a discussion. I can't remember the answer. That I don't think I did. Um. I'm not sure I agree. Because as I was saying to Charlie earlier, you get different interpretations within a religion. And uh, yes, within the, the dominant discourse within Hinduism, which is a pagan religion, is that, yeah, it's the glory and you need to get high and become one of the gods and like that. But then equally within Hinduism, you get these people that the, the set up their ashrams, um, uh, these, these, uh, and, and their, uh, these uh, gurus, and, and, and that's all based around everyone being equal and being the same. So and 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 prizing that, and you get those two yeah. tensions within paganism and within Christianity. Um, although I think you might be right that the, the dominant view at the moment um, is much more that that um, it's. Uh, have you been to India, Charlie? I, it's my big gap in my life is India and Australia, the two main regions I've not been to. Okay, have you been to Heathrow Airport and looked around the surrounding town? Um, unfortunately, yes, I have. I've cycled around Hounslow. there. As well. so you've been to Hounslow, yes. so that's like yeah. India. Like that. Imagine that, but more run down. Um, yeah. that's, that's basically <laughs> that's basically that's that's that's, that's 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 basically what we're talking about. So, um, um, so so yeah, so so I, I don't uh, I don't uh, I don't think, I, I think you're right overall. I think that's fair enough. But the, even within Greece, the Greek um, religion, you had the mystery cults and things that were based around equality and stuff like that and everyone being the same and entering trances and going a bit mad so i wanted not... to ask you very quickly ed as well like i i, I we're both men in our 40s 43 um but you know like i sometimes wonder if i've been maybe uh, what's the word i've been um what's the what's the term when you chop someone's balls off what's that called um Frustration. i've been i've been castrated by a secular scientific upbringing that I haven't been propagandized by warrior men to dream of paradise or Valhalla or what did the Spartans believe in their own version of Valhalla? And so the, the whole subject of this live stream, why is cowardliness here? Is that I'm very, and the Buddhists will hate me for this. I, I am I'm very attached to my corporeal 3D life and my body and the fear of it not lasting forever means that, you know, if, the Nazis invaded Britain. I'd probably collaborate because I've got three kids. I probably wouldn't join the French resistance. It'd be too difficult, you know, because I don't believe in Valhalla. I'm a fucking pussy now. Oh, I see. I see. I see. So you you would, um, yeah, you, you just want to grill. 
You just want to grill. Um, I just there's... want to grill and drink a few Bud Lights. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want to, you don't want to have to mess around with any of that fighting. So there's a certain no because like. Like being a, in the resistance, they were blowing up Nazi trains. They might shoot my whole family and torture me. But if I just put my head down and join the Vichy government and say, yes, sir, yes, sir, I'll, I'll probably live. Yeah, um, it's an interesting interesting difference. As to the, what, what is the psychology of the kind of person that is prepared to behave like that? Um, I, yeah. I suppose part, part of it is just psychopathology. If you like danger. You like you literally. Some people are okay. A psychopath is selfish. You're not going to fight for your country. That's true, but um, psychopathology is a, 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 a syndrome of interrelated traits, and one of those is you like danger, and and, yeah. and I think aspects of neuroticism as well, negative feelings like you fucking hate being dominated by other people, um, yeah, and, and you're, you're going to fight for it. Um, and and yeah. and so I, I think overall maybe conservatives are just happier people than liberals, and so that on and they're, they're more content to just grill. But then within the conservative, within those that are for whatever reason conservative, I don't know because they're high in conscientiousness or whatever, you're going to get people that add with that psychopathological psychopathological traits, and then those be and and, uh, and perhaps also just high religiosity as well, which is correlates with conservatism. Um, and, yeah. then, and then, and then those people will make those sacrifices, and then you're going to get those that are in the middle that don't. But I, Im I imagine that a lot of the people that were involved with the French Resistance were psychopathology, psycho, high in psychopathology, I would think, um, high in narcissism, high in uh, in all, all kinds of sort of antisocial traits, and they're no yeah. good. Most of them, these people are a problem, but then, but then yeah. when the Nazis come, then they're they're the ones that are prepared to fight. They're, they're, they're you not, know. Um... Just you got me thinking about the horrific waste of young men, endless amounts of you know, um, what is it? Oh, oh Dolce e decorum est pro patria mori, obviously Owen Wilson. But um, um, do you know, like in America for elections, it's a fact that whichever team has raised the most funds has gone on to win the election. So Russell Brand said as a joke, "Why don't we just do a kind of like." campaign who can raise the most money and then just give them the keys to the you know the white house 1600 pennsylvania avenue if i remember from watching films as a kid but then i got me thinking do you think there's a correlation in history that the side that has managed to raise the most money war chest has gone on to win the war so maybe for the next war against china or russia we should just say guys we should just put money into an escrow account maybe run by the swiss and whoever can raise the most trillions then you win, and then you write the new constitution, and then it will save us killing hundreds of thousands of young men. People are getting very upset in the chat that you said that Owen Wilson wrote Dolce et Decormest. It was Wilfred Owen. Oh! Uh, but, uh, <laughs> it was, wasn't, I That's who I meant, Wilfred Owen. It was, it was, it was Wilfred, bent double like... Owen Wilson's the American blonde actor that goes, wow, wow. Was, he didn't um, write poetry. Zoolander. Yeah. So the, the blonde guy at Zoolander didn't write Dolce e de Coromes. They Okay, okay. Dolce, yeah, yeah, bent double like old beggars under sacks, not need coughing like hags, we curse through sludge. Um, and how does the song go? How sweet it is to be dying for my country. It is. very. It is uh, Jolly is a poor man's Troy Hawk. Who's Troy Hawk? Have you heard of Troy Hawk? So I'm called Mike Oxlong. Who's watching it's hot. Tony, Tony Hawk, not a skateboarder. Troy Hawk. Troy. That's an American name, calling your kid Troy. Hey, Troy. Hey, Hercules. Hey, Xerxes. <laughs> there's, a, there's a Troy Southgate, who a, was a British far-right writer. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 but, uh, yeah. Otherwise, I'm not familiar with... And, and uh, uh, in yeah. the early forces, Derek Trotter came up with the idea of calling his son Troy. But in the end, he called him Damien. Um, but that, Damien? Yeah, Damien in Only Important Horses. They, Derek Dell has a son called Damien, doesn't he? With Raquel. Was I? Am I getting my film? I watched Rosemary's Baby recently. That excellent yeah, film. It was Damien in that, or am I thinking of a different yeah, film? Yeah, Damien did Rosemary's Baby. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. Now, from there, the, from there, the joke emerged. Um, but I, so I, I don't know who this uh, this Troy person is. But uh, sorry, not Troy. Um, this, yes, this. Uh, but but I'm gonna, uh, you carry on talking. I'll Google it quickly I'll for you. And uh, Troy. Well, you know, he's just a chap. He's just a chap that comments on your channel. We don't know who he is. I mean, he's just someone could be made up. Oh. Name, oh wait, there he is. That's you, Ed, in the in the smoking jacket. 
Oh, is that me? Ah, oh, okay, that's me. Oh, I see. I'm I'm a poor man's him. Okay, I'm Tony. I'm no, but he's sold out. He he's been fucking. He's been sucking the corporate car. He's been selling white chocolate digestive biscuits on social media. He's sold out. He's taken the McVitie's dollar and he's hawking now fucking high sugar I was, fucking. I was, I, was, I, was at, I was I was at university with this girl who was the granddaughter of Lord McVitie. Yeah. Um, um, we used to call her Miss Biscuit. Uh, and, you used to call uh, her what? Miss Biscuit. Miss Biscuit. Because okay. Right. And then um and then she fell off her horse. And lost six months of her memory, which meant which meant that she didn't. She st all the people she'd met when she started university, she couldn't remember them. Um, and it was, oh, well. it was it was quite bad. And but she said of me once within earshot, I didn't. She didn't know I could hear. She went, Ed. He, she was post Scottish. Went, Ed. He's he's so nice. I can't believe he didn't go to public school. And um, yeah. I was so nice that I couldn't be a state school boy. It was impossible. How, That's like, it. How? how? You know, but 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 uh, but but I was, um, but she was yeah she was posh Scottish. She had that, that, that funny accent that they have the the posh Scottish. Right, the next question comes from the Devastator, and he says, and I've had to write this down by hand. Um, oh my God, happy with forgiveness, ideological badge or parent, and not representative of identity. I can't, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to do this again next week. I've written it down. When I wrote it down, I can't read my own handwriting. When I when I scrawled it down, this made complete sense. Happier with forgiveness, says the Devastator. Ideological badge. Happier with something. Ideological badge or parent and not representative of identity. Unsure. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to do this again. I apologize. I can't read my own writing. I'm uh, happier with... I don't know what that says. That sounds like a list of words off a Scrabble board or something. It doesn't make... There's no grammar there. No, no, no. But he, he, he was asking a clear question, but I can't read my own writing, and so I just don't understand what he's saying. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'll, I'll return to that next week. Um, so the next question we have is from uh, Joe Winder, uh, and he says, um, um, if you were – no, sorry, yes. Tucker Carlson, what would you ask Vladimir Putin? I can't remember if I did that one last week. What would I ask? We Vladimir did that Putin? one last week, yeah, we did. did. We did okay, so the next question comes from, um, from, uh, yes, from Eric Ensar. Ainsar, and he says, hello, do you have any thoughts about Estonia? Uh, well, I guess that's aimed at me. I do. Yes, I do. I, I was in Estonia in May. At, well, I've got two, two separate, separate thoughts. One, I did a paper with my Russian colleague, Vladimir Shibayev, and my German colleague, David Becker, and we got IQ data for all Finno-Ugric places. Uh, and that is to say, we didn't use Hungary because they're not genetically Finno-Ugric, but we but but uh, we did Estonia, Finland, and then the various Finno-Ugric republics within Russia. And what we found is that they all have higher intelligence than the places via which they by which they are surrounded. So the Estonian IQ is about 102, Finnish IQ 103, and then you go into these republics, and like the the IQ of the Russians in the area is 95 or something, um, and their IQ is 100. And that's even the case in the places like the Komi or whatever, or the Corels, uh, where, where it's extremely poor. The Corels, they're living in very, very bad conditions. Um, and so they don't, uh, they, they, they don't, they don't, uh, you know, they've got very bad conditions. But nevertheless, their, their intelligence is very high. So there seems to be something about finno ugric people. I'm trying to scroll up because people are mugging me off and people think that I'm not reading the comments, but I always try and read the comments. People mug me off. Um, um, we, um, we talked about, sorry to jump in, last week you said that Finland is ranked as the happiest nation but has a very high suicide rate, something about yeah, the Finno. It's Finno ranked the happiest nation based on, things like, so based on things like equality and socioeconomic, um, uh, you know, whatever, and salary and stuff like this, but that's not that doesn't necessarily make you a happy nation. You could argue that the reason why you work hard and all this is because is because you're unhappy and you and you worry about the future whereas if you're a happy person then you don't work very hard and then you just get and you and you end up being poor so i don't i don't think i think that the whole measure of happiness is absolutely lud ludicrous a good measure of yeah. being unhappy is they kill themselves and that is that there's a high um, suicide rate in this country um, yeah. and 
and so and so you are. Uh, I've pinned the entropy thing, by the way. The person's put that in the chat. So Eva is too smart and beautiful for Ed's show. Eva, who? So who's Eva? I don't know oh, she's the Dutch, um, the Dutch um, social media lady. Yeah, I met her. She's I dumb. met her. I met her in October, and um, she seemed very introvert and therefore not suitable for a conversation on my channel. No, no, no. That was my so that was. That was my whilst you were talking, Ed, whilst you were talking, I, I spoke to my favorite friend here, Gemini, and uh, he gave me 10 facts about Estonia. I'm going to read out a couple here. It says, they're a tech nation, Estonia, Silicon Valley of Eastern Europe, 99% of government services are available online. They have a singing culture. They like to sing. And the third one, they're a sauna sanctuary. They, they like their, their hot, hot rooms. And the fourth one, they got 2,300 islands just off the coast of Estonia. They've got a lot of islands. Island paradise, it says on Google. Okay, okay, okay. Well, anyway, I seems to be that they're highly intelligent. They've, they've caught up with the West very quickly. So I first went to Estonia in 2003, and then it, it was poor. Uh, you could see that it had, it had potholes and whatever. It was poor talent. Um, yeah. And then I, I went there again uh, well, re, uh, in May. Uh, well, I actually went there again in 2013, was it? And then I went there again in May. And you can you can see the the, the difference. The difference is very marked. It's, it's, it's really caught up really, really, really quickly, which is consistent with them being highly intelligent and hardworking and, and whatever. The one thing that I did notice when I was there is they don't like speaking Finnish anymore. In 2003, they also... I don't know. They just don't. They, to that because it was that they could pick up Finnish TV under communism because they were so close to Finland, and so they all learnt Finnish. And then in, you could go to Finland. You could uh -huh. if you were a Finn that couldn't speak English or whatever. You could go to Estonia and you could be served in Finnish, and um, and that's just no longer the case. Uh, it, they all the young people speak English. That's it. They don't. They don't want to be. They don't want to look up to the Finns anymore. And they also um, the they're less. Um, well, I didn't see the same sort of drunkenness problems that I see among the Finns. I have to say, in Estonia, and they uh, and their English is very good now. I want a lot of people speak English, but they have a lot of foreigners in Tallinn, like working like Africans, whatever, working for restaurants. I was in this. I was in apparently the nicest hotel in Tallinn. None of the staff were Estonian, or almost none of the staff were Estonian, or even spoke Estonian. And so that really? tells you how good the English is. They don't. They don't even speak Estonian. And, yeah. Uh, I, I just sort of barked at them in Finnish, and they didn't understand that. And and it was. But you know, um, yeah. speaking speaking of the what are those three countries called the uh, Lithuania, Latvia, what they refer to? Baltic states. Those Baltic. are the ones. Sorry, I'm getting confused with the Balkans, with the, you know Albanians, Balkan, ba Baltic. It's a bit <laughs> Baltic. That's where it comes from. You know, Zelensky, our, our favorite um, fundraiser. He's a top fundraiser in the world. He was in uh, New York, and he was talking once again. About how unless we give a hundred billion to Ukraine, the Russians are going to invade the Baltic states and kill everyone. And I'm like saying, "Oh bullshit!" Like the guy can't even take Eastern Ukraine easily. He's not going to start invading Europe, is he? Is he? I, I think it's most. Although the, the, a lot of the um, east of Estonia is totally Russian speaking. So, okay. So, if, and it borders Russia, of course. But, but uh, no, I think I think it's most unlikely that they would they would make their way into the Baltic states. What's um, that Russian? Is it called Kaliningrad? That little enclave that's just in yeah. Germany. Is it Kaliningrad? Yes. Kaliningrad, yeah. Mm. And uh, that's yeah. some like old Prussian agreement that they had to give it to Russia or something or something. Wasn't it after the war? I, I can't. I'm, I'm ignorant. I, mean, I don't know. After war that they got it. Um, but yeah, that's where Kant was from. Manuel Kant was from there. Um, and do you know if it's any more, is it more based than European or, or more like modern? Because I, I know a lot of Russia has got it's back. Like, it's, like, it's, like, it's like the wealthiest region of Russia. It's like, it's like Russia. Okay, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's, 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 it's wealthy. So, so that's a, yeah, that's an interesting place. So there you go. So uh, Kaliningrad, yeah, Kaliningrad, Olufsen one. That's that, that's uh, that's that's correct. Okay, and then we have another question from. Um, this is from uh, Joe Winder. Thank you, sir. Um, and and he says, um, uh, does Charlie know of of and like the comedian Kevin Bridges? Oh, um, forgive my ignorance. Kevin Bri Bridges is that Bridges like Bridge? Yeah, I, I think I think I might have seen him on eight out of ten cats does countdown or something, unless I'm getting confused with somebody else. So, um, let me just see if I recognise his face, Kevin Bridges. Oh, Scottish lads. Yeah, yeah, I do actually. 
He is. Uh, he is pretty funny. You might recognize him, Ed. He's a little chubby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him on a uh, ten counts. Let's count now. Yeah, he's he's. Quite yeah, funny. he's been around for a few years. I mean, my only criticism would be he can sometimes be a bit safe, mainstream. Like I'm there going, oh, he's going to tell an edgy, spicy joke, but then he reels it back in, like that fucking Weimar comedian Russell Howard, that blonde piece of shit, the BBC Russell Howard guy who is like giving safe BBC politically correct jokes. And he's got his own show, Russell Howard. Ha- that's like 10 years ago. Is he still a comedian? Have you heard of Russell Howard, Ed? Yes, vaguely, 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 vaguely. Yeah, he's yeah. like the kind of like vanilla, sweet, like perfectly safe BBC woke comedian. And he, it's yeah, like... I, 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 my, um, my friend Nick Dixon, who's a comedian, calls them regime comedians. Re- that's regime. a good one, regime. Yeah. Ray, Ray, regime comedians and Graham Linehan calls them that as well. Ray, the, 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 the regime comedians. So, so yeah, he, he sounds dreadful. Russell Harty, no, Russell Harty was a TV presenter, wasn't he? Wasn't a comedian. Someone's saying Russell Harty. No, I'm, I'm sure he was. Um, he was something else. Okay, the next question comes from. Um, uh, hang on, what, I can't see it. Um, uh, where, hang on, no, I'm getting confused. Hang on, sorry. Uh, greetings from Australia. I'm sure someone said that. Uh, yes, uh, Nikki Poundtown says, uh, "When freedom seems out of reach, you've always got Charlie Veach." That's very good. Um, and, and and he says, "Greetings from Adelaide, Australia." Hello, if you're watching in Adelaide, Australia, um, it's uh, it's 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 very early there. I think it's it's probably about seven o'clock in the morning, isn't it? So yeah, that. Um... Reminds me of a film. Anyway, I want to ask. There's a film called Cruel Intentions uh, um, with um, Reese Witherspoon in it, and um, one of her friends comes back from Australia, but she's wearing a mini skirt with no underwear, and the main character, the kind of young Gatsby-esque uh, Lothario playboy, he goes, "Oh, you just got back from Australia," and then he goes, "How are things down under?" As he looks up her skirt, and I just remember that. Now, sorry, it's not not right <laughs> to say that. Sorry, but it was. How, anyway, I want to ask Adelaide boy, uh, what's it? What's the name? Jo- Joanna Porterhouse. How are things down under? Nikki, Nikki, Nikki Poundtown. Nikki Poundtown. N- Nikki Nikki um, Poundhouse. Nikki Poundtown. So I hope, I hope things are going going okay with you, Mister. But my my wife was brought up in Australia for part of her childhood. So uh, and uh, oh yeah, she, she's yeah she she speaks English with a sort of slight Australian accent. Um, and she'd, uh, she'd, you know, she'd like, I'm, so I'm, I might go there at some point, but then would they let me in though? I don't know. I mean, it's always that worry. Oh, no, Ed, you're okay. Like when they ask you immigration questions, like, oh, you're Australian, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, you can't take fruit from the United States of America into Canada, even though they have a land border. So surely any any insects or whatever that are, that are not native, that are native to America, or at least the North of America, are going to be native to Canada. So it you, does seem Ed, to me... Like, these are the thoughts that I have as well. When I was a child uh, visiting friends near Dover, and you could clearly see France, my as a 12 year old my biggest worry was rabid bats would fly across the channel and bite me and give me rabies because there's no rabies in england and i was worried no. about the rabid bats and there's no there's there's but there's no there's no cure for rabies i mean you if you get it unless you get given the antidote immediately like basically immediately um yeah you're dead i mean, basically just don't yeah. get rabies just don't. Yeah, it's even worse than bad AIDS. Like bad AIDS, if you get bad AIDS, you can get an injection that will probably stop it taking hold. But with rabies, you've got no chance. No, you, you, you're dead. If you've got the antidote there and then, or within like about half an hour or something, then you're dead. So, so, yeah. and so, just don't get rabies. I can't emphasize it enough. I mean, um, don't it, don't even stroke dogs outside of England. Don't no. don't don't. No. Let, you know, I mean, I don't think they have. Speaking rabies. of. Yeah, Ed, funny you mentioned that. I was driving with uh, Laura the other day here in the Lancashire countryside, and then she's like, oh, look, a cute little rabbit on the side of the road. We need to rescue it. But I looked at it, and it had the really puffy eyes of meximatosis, you know, the rabbit Australian Ooh. disease. That they... yeah. And I said, don't pet it. And then it ran out into the traffic anyway and got exploded. But it was uh, 
Yeah, you don't pet a, a maximatosis rabbit, but Laura wanted to no. bring it home. She thought it's cold, it needs to come home. Maybe are you but, sure it had puffy eyes from maximatosis, or was that puffy eyes because it was like drunk or something, or hung over? No, I, 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 in Scotland many years ago, I saw a maximatosis rabbit, and this one looked very similar. And it was walking out into a, a kind of big major A road junction, so it was definitely not uh, it was blind. It was blind. It was. It was. It was. Yeah. Something had gone wrong. Yeah, it was not not an intelligent rabbit. Um, it was okay. not a well uh, rabbit. No, not a well rabbit. No. Um, what is this? Hang on, I've got another question. Um, despair says, um, speaking of wanting to fight or not, would you talk about pessimism someday? I always found interesting to think about what kind of people were Schopenhauer and Nietzsche from a scientific perspective. A pessimism of weeks. Well, I, I will. I tell, I'll look into that. I will. I will look into that in the coming week. Despair, appropriately named despair, for asking me a question about pessimism, and I will. I will come back to you. I will come back to you with an answer. Um, as to, I mean, I remember being, uh, I, I think uh, there's something attractive about that kind of philosophy when you're like a, in your late teens because you feel really de depressed, yeah. and like, so so it's almost like they never got over it. But, but, uh, so, but yeah. uh, yeah. and Schopenhauer, he's like the main proponent of German idealism that all oh, everything is mine, there's one ontology and it's mine, it gets rid of the hard problem of philosophy how do physical structures organize and become mental? It gets rid of that. But he wrote his uh, main work, his magnus opus, um, was um, will and representation. And he said that there's the blind will, which is what he's like, the mind of God. And then everything that we see, physical stuff, these are correlates. These are representations. But the problem with Schopenhauer, funny that despair raised him. He was also the most pessimistic motherfucker in the world. His own, funny I call him a motherfucker. His own mother, it's a public letter. Um, wrote to him, basically disowning him for being the most nasty, aggressive piece of shit. And Schopenhauer was what we call an anti-natalist. His, his conclusion to the idealist, we live in, everything's mind, and it's like absurd. And he says that the solution to that is to escape. He's like, he's like a Buddhist on steroids. You don't escape the cycles of reap. He goes, just stop breeding, stop having kids, He's the eternal pessimist, reality, where we don't, don't let any more children get ripped from the void and be forced to live a 70-year 3D suffering thing. But I couldn't disagree more. And what was the other one despair raised? Nietzsche. Nietzsche, I don't think he's pessimistic. His most famous phrase, God is dead and we've killed him. It wasn't so much a, a battle cry of victory. It was more a lamentation of sadness. God is I've dead. Got, I've, got, I've got this book here, uh, Christmas well, yeah, 98 no. or 97, uh, Nietzsche for Beginners. Uh, nice. So it's, a, it's, it's a cartoon book about, you know, a cartoon introduction to the philosophy of Nietzsche for people that are about, sort of aged about, people that are sick formers, basically, and that there's Schopenhauer there. Um, yeah, well, there he is, a moody, miserable Schopenhauer. I mean, what a silly haircut. And uh, there he is, look. And uh, there's Nietzsche there, uh, with uh, a, a sort of a, a Mr. Tums Nietzsche, and 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 uh, and yeah. So I, I, they they were quite good. These were the, 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 in uh, thirty years ago, twenty five years ago. The uh, cartoon introduction. A lot, Nietzsche. a lot of these philosophers, they managed to make common sense very verbose, and you know, like with Schopenhauer, I'd, I'd read more into it, but the guy's in love with his own. Uh, German skills, very flowery German skills. And it's just, so that book, that book you mentioned, um, I, uh, "The World Is Will and Representation." I um, I, is that what it's called? I um, I tried yeah. a, a copy of it at my parents' house. I tried to read that. It's dreadful. I can't get impenetrable crap. But he he, he, he yeah. does write some essays about things like women and and race. Yeah, and they're, yeah, and, they're, and they're, they're, yeah, they're quite well written. But his it's his, yes. it's it's, it's the world world's will. But anyway, I shall look into that next week. Um, Charlie Mod FFS, someone's saying. I don't know what that means. Oh, fuck. Um, yeah, well, it's new to Charlie, so presumably he doesn't have any mods. So so presumably there's people writing naughty things on his channel. Uh, but I can block them from here. So if, if Oh, it's okay. No, what it is, what it is, is um, there's a lot of people desperate to get some sort of emotional reaction out of me. But because I, I often ignore them. It's uh, and don't forget, guys. Every single comment, even on the live stream, it helps the algorithm to promote this video. So let the haters hate. Let them write whatever they want. And remember, ag allegations without evidence can be dismissed without evidence. So yeah, 
I'm a I'm a, a child murderer, wife Liam, beater. Liam, Liam, is, Liam is Liam is writing cock piss partridge. Um, That's to, fine. To, it helps the oh, algorithm. Let them in. and also. I would rather my haters gave me the attention of hating on me than if they didn't watch at all. Obviously. No, that's 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 fair enough. I mean, there's nothing. The one thing that's worse than being talked about is not being talked about, as they as, as, as they as they as they say. Yeah. Hello, Char. Hello, Charlie Pepper. How are you doing? Good to see you. Um. So I think I'm going to wrap up now. So I shall research this shop and half thing for next week. If you have any questions between now and then, then you can of course send them in any time uh, on Entropy. And uh, I will I will look into them, and um, we will see you uh, next Monday. Uh, and goodbye. <laughs>